Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us tonight here in Amazon Seller Tribe live and then on the recording. Some of you will see this later because you're in the hustle mode and you should be packing boxes, shipping, uh, hustling bye, out bye, there. Bye, the, bye, bye. Right? Bye. Bye like you're, you're, you've lost your mind. We're super excited to have our special guest and friend here with us. Um, Mr. Steven Peterson. Now, some of you in Amazon Seller Tribe really are here because of Steven Peterson. You heard his e-commerce uh, podcast, uh, e-commerce momentum podcast, and found out about Amazon Seller Tribe. And he had that nice soothing voice uh, and, and just suckered you into tribe. And so we're going to blame him for that. If you don't like it, we'll blame him for it. If you do like it, of course, it's it's probably me that did that. So teasing you, Stephen. Um, now we're going to try to keep his friends, Andy and uh, Andy Slammons and Nathan or uh, Dan Wentworth, from blowing up Stephen's messages and making fun of him here. So Stephen, no matter what they Come say, I, love. No, I don't I agree. I whatever they say, I just will not fall for it. Okay. Mm, nice. <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh, there to go. There oh, they go. Good idea. So let's just dive right in. Uh, first of all, because some people haven't heard your story, they're not familiar with e-commerce uh, momentum podcast, and I, I definitely want you to talk about that. But first of all, t tell about your e-commerce background because you are one of the elders of the e-commerce scene. The gray hair. And, I've been gray since uh, I was 20. So you've been gray since you're 20. So start there and then uh, get to that part, that good part about the podcast. We want to talk about that too. Go ahead. Sure. Sure. I mean, uh, like a lot of people started on eBay and I remember like, it was like an epiphany when I sold something on eBay. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I could sell it for more than I paid for it. Kind of that, that moment. And I remember um, starting and when I, when I got started, we wanted to find a way to make money. My son was in college. He was attending Drexel University and uh, we oh, don't borrow money. So we, we paid for it as it goes and needed to make some extra money. And uh, it was a great side hustle. So I was a part-time seller up until, geez, uh, five years now. I was a part-time seller. Always was. I always I had a big a big corporate job. Uh, we moved to you know they moved us around in the corporate world. Um, I'm was in finance. I'm an accountant by trade, and so uh, it was a great side hustle, and I loved it. Um, and I'm the guy that went and did uh, my buying before work, uh, lunchtime, and right after work. Come right, on, every single day. Come on, and um, it gets e it was easy. And you know, I was thinking about that today. Um, I think you mentioned that you have a lot of new people and new sellers coming in. Um, and I remember when I had a big job, I made a lot of money, and I'm not bragging, but that was the truth. I didn't really worry about what I made here because right. we made stuff, but I made a lot of bad decisions because right. of it. You know, mm. because when you don't have to worry about your money, you're right. not as careful with it. You're willing to take chance. Oh, I know better. I know the, the keep sense. a chart says this, but right. I know better because I'm, you know, I'm no better. <laughs> I've got, I've got so, a feeling. I've got, I've got a, a feeling. feeling about this I, those who are coming to see my warehouse, you will see a warehouse full of feelings. Um, and I won't even be able to show you all 26,000 square feet, but I have pallets everywhere. Um, and when I moved from my one warehouse to this one, true, true story, a hundred pallets, I moved 100 oh, wow. pallets of wow. stuff. So now you still were kind it. of a wheeler and dealer at auctions and stuff like that, weren't you? Yeah. I, and, and it's funny if you want to buy stuff to resell, you know, like Andy always says, sell stuff around your house. That's the cheapest place to get it. You already bought it. Somebody bought it for you. It was a gift. Walk around and find stuff and you'll be right. shocked at what stuff sells for. Yeah, um, yeah. Do it all the time. But then, you know, to me, the next cheapest place to buy literally is at people's house. And mm. um, I was able to run an ad in the newspaper back in the day. Um, and I would be able to uh, put an ad. I think I put an ad in for books, buying books, which is a great thing because everybody has books. Right. And then I would get in there. I'd, I'd hand them a sheet, just like you see on American Pickers. I was doing that forever. This is the stuff I buy. Oh, I got this and Nintendos oh. and toys and stuff like that. Right. And you just put it in a pile. And then I'd be like, well, how much do you want for it all? And you get to cherry pick. Right. And right. they'd be like, oh, I don't know. I'd like, I don't want to offend you, but you know, hey, would, would $50 be enough? Somebody would say to me, I'd be like, oh no, it's worth more than that. Here's a hundred dollars. And they're like, who is this guy? Oh, like, then they're wow. Delighted. 
And then you get friends calling, their friends calling, like, would you take my stuff too? But you can buy scale volume at that point. Wow. And I bought scale volume. I mean, I bought scale. And my wife, those of you who get, you'll get to meet her in Hershey, uh, she'll tell you about our basement. She thought I was a hoarder because you can <laughs> quickly fill up. We have a brand new house and I filled up our basement, Ooh. literally. Never listed most of it. That I probably, one guy told me I'm dragging around an ex-girlfriend, it feels like, because I keep moving this stuff from warehouse to warehouse, but it's so easy to do. So I, that, that was the best way to buy. Then the next cheapest place to buy are auctions, where you can buy a box lot for a little bit of money or a big pile or whatever. And then uh, probably yard sales, then flea markets. Um, and then maybe an antique mall or something like that. You yes. can buy that stuff. And uh, I did all that and I was pretty good at it. Um, right. And you were selling on eBay at the time. Correct. Well, and you still I, sell on eBay. I do. Correct. Correct. I do. We started on Amazon probably 2010. Started selling on Amazon, maybe somewhere there. I'm, I've been FBA since 2011 mm. because mm -hmm. so I, I'm not bragging, but I get daily payouts, full gotcha. payouts. I don't have to gotcha. wait. They don't hold anything back. Um, so that was, that was in 2011. I think they turned that off and I think we just barely made it, but we were selling before then books. Mm. Um, I love Andy's story about lifting those books. I still mm. sell books. I don't like it. I'd love to get rid of my books. I've got pallets of books. Somebody wants them. They can message me. I'd be uh, interested in, especially if you're a newer seller, I will help you. Um, right. I would love right. to help you, but, um, books, CDs. And back in those days, I, um, this is a funny story. So I remember buying books at a book sale and I saw some guy and geez, this is now at this point, it's probably 2011. There was some guy, he had a little scanner and I'm literally like, you know, I had looking him up or whatever I was doing. That's I don't remember it. how I did it. it. Yeah. And he had this little scanner oh. and this is, this is a true story. Back then, for some reason, I was able to deal with somebody at Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I messaged, somehow I got to somebody, some vice president, and he goes, oh, Steve, you don't know what's possible. He sent me a link. And it was like, a, it was a PDA scanner back then. Oh, and cool. it's a little hand, I still have them somewhere in my warehouse. Oh, yeah. They're like, uh, they're bigger than your phone. And you used to have to download the database. Right. And back then it was only books. Right. And um, right. that's you a, Nick and Anitra jump stays. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, and Nick, Nick is an expert at it. Right. Oh. And so- that was you'd scan. And then I went to libraries and started buying books and all that kind of jazz, but it was like eye opening to me. And um, then the book, the book, whoever did that company who owned that database, then opened it up for toys. And right. uh, boy, that just when the world went crazy. So, right. but it was funny way back in the day, you had to download the database every night to have it. And, but it was so fast because it was in your, right, right, right. It was it literally was, in your hand. Yeah. You had an instant answer and right. a little, a little cash register would ring based on the parameters and you'd be like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so that was my uh, foray. You know, you're in, you're in eBay and you're rolling in that you get a hold of Amazon FBA and you start rolling in that. And probably about 2013, 14, there started to be communities um, growing uh, around Amazon selling. And yeah. tell us about, um, uh, you started kind of moving around in those different communities and, you know, people started kind of, you know, pecking on you saying, hey, you need to do something with that voice you got. Yeah. You that. know, it's funny you say that because, I, you know, I still don't think I have a good voice, but I've had so many people tell me that I have a very smooth voice. You can't hear it least, or maybe it's my hearing, I can't hear it in myself. Um, and now until my age, I'm 56 today. Um, and I guess I, no, no, just, just oh. a couple weeks ago. But, oh, but my yeah. point is, is that I never heard that until I was 50. And you think about your whole life, all the different things you've done. I've been in, you know, been an executive forever, all those different, nobody's ever said, Steve, you have a really nice voice. Oh, and, okay. uh, you know, and so then to hear it, you're like, Hey, what could I have done? You know, I could have been in radio or something cool. Yeah, like who knows? That would have been something cool. Yeah. But actually where I really got involved was through Chris Green, kind of like oh, a lot okay. of people like Andy right. uh, tells uh -huh. about inviting him. Right. He and he connected Andy and I, uh -huh. and this would be, seven plus years ago now, seven mm -hmm. years we've been friends. And it's funny, him and I were one of the first group of people to go scanning together. Oh, now, nice. You guys know Andy, he is leave it all out there, get his heart out <laughs> on the table, right? He's that guy. 
but when he has to go buy stuff, he's good for about three minutes. And he's like, I'm bored to death. I'm going to sit in a car. And so, but it was funny. We, we went to a couple places scan. We had breakfast. We met, we liked each other. We, we started scanning together and there'd be five on the shelf. So I, I, I'll take two, you take the third one. Neither one of us cared about that. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the signs of like, that's where our friendship, like neither one of us right. cared about the money. It was like, right. he was somebody who else was interested in it. And right. back then he was still working for Hershey and, you know, sure. and I was still my job. So um, that was how we met through Chris Green. I still thank Chris for that today um, to be able to find a friend like that. Um, you know, Chris is a great connector. Um, so, yeah, that's anyway. amazing. You know, um, it's wonderful when people meet each other and they don't expect anything in return. They just come to to be a participant with the other person in their lives. And that's what you were doing with Andy. Let's talk about how that relates to Amazon selling. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you meet a person and um, just begin to enjoy them, there's a natural evolution of potential business success, isn't there? There is, you know, it's funny. That's why I love my podcast. Um, I think I'm at like 470 episodes. I love the story because for some reason, some people can't see the potential in themselves, I guess, you know, nobody's ever recognized them. And then I start talking to you. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm leaning in because I'm so interested right. because, you know, how you overcame that, how you didn't go in the corner and suck your thumb, as right. I like to say, you know, how you got past that. You don't think it's a big deal, but right. I tell everybody, there are six people listening right now who are struggling, who are yeah. just, you know, and to hear a spark because somebody else met Andy Slammons, right, Chris right, Green, right. or I have a cool story I'll tell at the end. I mean, that is, can be done to you and every single person here, especially a newer seller. Um, you know, I get it, it, you know, to see, I told you this, uh, I don't know how long ago we talked, but I told you about when I saw that picture of all those people on the conference, I didn't make it to Dan. I know I didn't make it to Branson, <laughs> but when I saw all those million dollar sellers, I mean, I get choked up thinking about it. I mean, yeah. To find this, you know, especially in these times, when you think about, you know, working for a company, and I'm, I bet you there's some great companies that people work for, where the company was like, we're going to take care of you, we care about you, really, not fake, that kind of right. thing. Right. But I bet you people really got to see, as one of my notes say here, you run when you see them naked, they get to see their company naked and see what a piece of junk they are and how they really don't care. Well, well guess what? If you can figure this Amazon thing, if you stay in this group and listen to the real advice and really do it. Um, you can change your future. And when I saw that group of people up on that stage, it, it really gets me choked up to think those people aren't going to have to go through a 30 year corporate life uh, right. that like right. I had, you know? Right. Right. You know, I think that's so powerful. Um, you've been in the business long enough. You've been in the realm long enough to know that it's not an easy thing to bust out a million dollars in sales in your business. And there are many, many, there's like, uh, I don't know, 2.7 or whatever million sellers on the Amazon platform, but you know, th there's only a fraction of them that are actually active and really building their lives and their businesses. Um, Gary always says when he hears your voice, if he was uh, on the edge of a, a ledge about to jump off, he would like you to be the one to talk him off. I so would call I'm him sure. right then. Call me immediately. I will talk you off that ledge. He will talk you off. But, but really in business, sometimes there are those ledges, those, those places where you're like, ah, I made a bad move or I didn't know what I didn't know. And now I'm here. I'm in a dangerous place. And people um, listen to you and Gary and Dan and Andy and others as voices of wisdom. And uh, it's been a significant part of people's growth. Let's talk about e-commerce uh, uh, momentum podcast. How can people hear it? How can they hear some of the episodes from the past if they just now getting turned on to it? Uh, guide us and direct us there real quick. Do a commercial for us. Yeah, no, I don't really have a commercial. I mean, you know, it, it, I just... I have a, I have a really cool story from somebody. I get a million notes about that, you know, just like, Hey, where's, where are you at podcast? You haven't done one in a while. And I'm just so busy. I mean, I, I want to, and I want to give it all, but I want to go back and connect back with people. Like I love the story again. I, unfortunately, when you have a little level of success, I had a little bit of success. Um, you get all these companies coming after you. Oh, I must have every day somebody, you know, there's agencies out there. I want my client. I want my client. And I, 
I just don't want to do those anymore. I don't right. like it. It's not comfortable right. for me. I'm not going to give you the, the big answer. I'm not going to give you the big wisdom. You go to a Gary or somebody like that who's going to be able to do, he's a much better person and much better coach than I am. But I think I can draw something interesting out of you, Gay, and then I can help others connect with it. And yeah. that is my gift. And I know what my gift is. And so I don't want to do it half, 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 uh, cocked. I want to do it the right way. So, so I'll get back to it, but just go to ecommercemomentum.com and, and you'll, you'll hear them go back and start, you know, some of the stuff is a little dated, of course, because it's probably five years, you know, I've been doing it for longer, five years, but you know, go back and listen to, you know, I was thinking about one of the, one of the stories that I've tell so many times in, and this is where I think new sellers have to get perspective because the negative is you see all those million dollar sellers and then you compare yourself against them and you're like, I yep. suck. I'm yep. a terrible person. I'm not good at yep. this. Yeah. Um, Dan and I laughed. There was a store that a store that we shop at heavy. And I remember saying to Dan, I, I, we just can't figure it out. He's like, just be patient, figure it out. And sure enough, you know, boom, once the light bulb goes on, it's like, oh my gosh, it was right in front of us. You couldn't see it. And I can't wait for new sellers to get that light bulb. Right. The light bulb has to happen. You won't right. just figure it. But there was a, a gentleman I interviewed probably like number 40. Now I was up 400 and some odd. So this is a long time ago. Chris Wilkie is his name. And I remember the story was um, he went to college, graduated college, got a corporate job, had a good job, made a good living, um, but said, Steve, I loved college more than anything. I always think of that Mm. Van Wilder, except for he's not a wild guy, but he loved college. He could go there forever, he said. It was my best time. I was in my zone, met his wife there. And uh, he sold on Amazon because he took a pay cut to go work at his college. Mm. And he sold on Amazon. He had to make up like $20,000 a year. That was wow. what he needed. That's what he fell short. Right. And he sold on Amazon just enough to make his 20 grand to have the life he dreams. And he's like, right. Steve, I get summers off. I get to go out and eat at the, at the thing. I talked to kids. He was in the alumni association. So he had just like a ball, always having a party. Always. I mean, it's like so neat to see that opportunity. And right. so a new seller, I tell you, if you can contribute um, just to pay that electric bill, to right, start, right. it's the win. That's a big win, right, especially if you're right. home with your kids and you can do this. Right. Oh my God, that's so awesome. Right. So I think perspective is so important. And I really hope new sellers get that perspective that if you put in the time, you do the work, you can be as successful as everyone else. However, it's a, uh, was it Dan, uh, Dan Wentworth's a 20 year overnight success. Right, right, right. An overnight success. <laughs> right. Sorry. Well, we have a we have a lot of people who can relate to what you're talking about. You know, the, some of them are still in the, what I call the hustle mode, where they really need to be grinding and need to be doing almost every part of the business themselves. It's just what you've got to do as you're building your capital, especially if you're bootstrapping the business, right? So you've got to do that, you know. And I always say, if two menopausal grandmas like me and Colleen can do it, you know. Anybody can, you know, we, we know how to grind um, and hauling boxes up and down the steps to, you know, from the basement, those sorts of things. Many people can relate to that. Um, and there's that grinding mode. And then there's that place where things start to click and it becomes really a building, scaling, building, scaling, building, scaling, right? Building, scaling and perfecting. And you've gotten to that place in your own business yeah, where I've gotten there. <laughs> where we're at no well, we, let me, we're gonna talk about some numbers here in a minute. If you're gonna let me, if you just please let me, because um, by the time you get to uh, where you are, uh, you figured a few things out. Um, just before we get to the numbers, though, I've got a, a crazy question for you. Somebody gave me and said, make sure you ask him this. What is the craziest thing? you've sold? Well, I've sold some, some odd things. There, there, there are two things that stand out to me. And one, Deanna Slamets is going to benefit from. So I went to an auction and like, uh, it was a Friday night auction. I used to go, cause you get it. You, there's another problem with auctions. You get addicted to that stuff. I mean, you can, cause you know, you love the highs and winning and all that kind of jazz. I remember going to this auction and I always knew you never bought glass because who's going to I'm not selling glass. I don't know anything about it. I don't like it. And in this box was some kind of plaque or something like that with this guy's name from Hershey. And he passed away and it was his plaque or whatever. Long story short, I end up with the box that I wanted, but the guy threw in these two other boxes because he's like, nobody else bought them. It's going together and you get stuck with all this junk. So you're looking through it. I threw it in my truck, went home. Um, Turns out, um, Bossons, which is chalkware, which I didn't know at the time, these little, most of the time you see them, these little 
these little heads of pe- uh, characters and stuff. And there's pirates and there, there's Boston's collectors and they're made in England. But this was a plate. So I remember putting it up at auction for whatever reason. And it was a plate. That's what I called it. And it was of the World Trade Center, Twin mm. Towers. Mm. And, um, you know, I mean, I knew, you know, obviously there's something, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And when the auction closed, it was like $900. And I'm like, in the last second, it jumped from, you know, 20 bucks to $900. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then you find out how rare it really is. Oh my it was gosh. chipped and all this stuff. And I described it as a plate with some chips, you know, that kind of thing. And so that was pretty exciting. That was years and years ago, but maybe three years, two years ago, probably two years ago, um, one of the guys that works for me, I, I buy, I still have a warehouse full of stuff. Anybody who comes to see me knows I do. And I said to one of the kids that work, I call them kids, um, one of my son's friends. And I said to him, I said, oh yeah, I've got some Magic the Gathering cards somewhere here and oh. they're still sealed. And I said, oh. I know there's some value to them. And he goes, oh my God, he would hound me every day. Where are those cards? Where are those cards? Where are those cards? <laughs> so months later, I find them. And I said, hey, I found those cards. I think there's some value to them. So he said, all right, let me go look. I'll go check. He comes running to my office. He says, Steve, I, I think they might be worth, you know, a thousand dollars. And I'm like, awesome. I paid a quarter for him in a box. I mean, it was a box full of stuff. I'm like, awesome. So, and I said, I think they're worth more than a thousand dollars. Cause I knew how rare they are. You know, you, you kind of know a little bit about this stuff, but a little bit to be dangerous. Uh, he goes out, he comes running back in, Steve, they might be worth $3,000. <gasps> comes back in later, $5,000, blah, blah, blah. Oh, maybe 10,000. I'm like, yeah, come on. All right. Now, <laughs> so we're literally out. I think we are at a Nike and we're buying and the auction's going off and it's going and it's going and it's going. And we're literally in line. And when it sold at $10,000, um, I'm like, oh my God, we're never going to get paid this deck of cards. They're never going to pay us this stuff. You know, that's, you see all those people, the scams. Right, 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 right. right. So I'm like, all right. Yeah, really? And uh, long story short, turns out to be a guy that worked in the World Trade Center. Um, I took the boys, my son and, and the guy who listed it. We uh, drove to New Jersey, got on a ferry, took it over to the city. I took the boys for bagels and cream cheese i'm like you have to have a new york city bagel right. we did that we were at the world trade center we meet the guy face to face he's a collector you can approve an ebay sale like in person because i would not ship it and so he yeah. had to accept it i talked to ebay and they said yeah. just have him do this he did it we took a picture with him and i, I still have the picture he's an investor he's got three or four of them he said that ten thousand. he said that'll be 30 grand um, within X, like he knew all this stuff. Wow. And I think at this point they actually are worth that much. And he said, I have three other ones just like it. And this is the way I invest to diversify my portfolio. Interesting. But those boys got a spark and they got the taste. They got to win. I think we took the train to New Jersey or something, whatever, but they got to have that full experience. Yeah. And man, they just, it was just a wonderful time. So that was my goal. Yeah. How old were your boys when that happened? Well, that's only two years ago and he's 24, I think. So he's 22 and his friend who works for us, he's one of our buyers. He's 22 or now I guess he's 24. So they were like 20, early twenties, but for them, it was like a mind blowing thing for me to see that. So anyway, pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, Stephen, I'm going to start throwing you some softballs. I want you to hit a bunch of uh, home runs for us here today. So, um, now these are really brainy sort of hmm. softballs. So, um, don't, don't be scared. Okay. And if I hit you with one, I don't really mean it. <laughs> Here comes the first one. And, and I want you to, when I, when I, when I throw the softball, just say what comes to mind. Okay. okay? Make a string of good decisions. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Andy always asks me, he's like, man, you just all of a sudden your your numbers are climbing. What what are you doing? And I'm like, you know, to be honest with you, all I'm doing is putting together a series of good decisions. Not everyone, but I just seem to be like I'm really stopping and saying, hmm, you know, that's outside of my purview or that's that's not where we're going. We or we stick to a, if we agree that this is going to be the rank that we're going to stay on. For example, this is the parameters we're using in our buying. I'm not going to be smarter than Keepa. I'm just going to follow it. And boom, I follow the model. I just trust the model. And then I use the model and I use the model. I watch Gary and I see his success and I mean, it's incredible. But if you listen to him, he doesn't stray very much. He has a very pretty simple model. 
That's right. But he follows it every day right. and he reinforces it. And so that's all I've been doing is making a series of good decision. Um, and I'll qualify it because you have to begin today. So again, if you've made a big mistake in your life and who hasn't, every single Let person. Um, okay. Stop that. Now let's make the right decision. Okay. Then the next right decision and the next right decision. And all of a sudden, you know, you get a string together and you have a little bit of a run and then you can continue that. Mm, so good. Make a string of good decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So powerful. Um, here's another softball for you. Get this one. Connect with others. Easier said than done. My closest friends are Amazon sellers. I mean, they are. And, you know, we, we, when we get together, of course we talk business and I can, I, I talk to my friends every single day, pretty much or message, whatever, but realistically it's more about being a good husband or being a good father or being a good friend or, Hey, this is going on in my life, you know, or I've got an illness or, you know, those kind of things. And so by finding those people in your life and to be honest with you, purging the ones that aren't good for your life. Mm. Um, but that connection is incredible. And again, you call me and say, Hey, I need this. Sure. What do you need? Tell me what it is. I'll be right there. Um, I'm just thinking about, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example, but I, I've had these guys call and say, Hey, and I'll be like, yeah, what do you need? You right. know, tell me what you need. I'll be right there. Uh, right. in a second, I would be there and I would call them if I had a problem in a second. Yeah. And I know they wouldn't judge me. They would just help me. That's hard to get. Um, but like I tell my, my kids, my older uh, son and my younger son to have friends, you have to be a friend mm -hmm. and a real friend and not a convenient friend. Mm. So when their stuff gets messy, you have to be there to help them through it wow. because you have messy stuff. That's right. So, um, um, and I think it's funny, one of my guys was out late tonight and he messaged me. He's like, hey, can I work from home tomorrow? Um, and we can talk about our business. We do tech support for Andy's company. Right. And so I'm like, yeah, he can work from home tomorrow. So he doesn't have to come in for an hour or whatever it was. Yeah, of course. You gave to me. Mm. Of course I would give to you. Mm. You know, that you, should, you know, so connecting is just so important and connecting real, you know, not yes. fake, real. Yes. So, so important. And um, for some it's very hard to do because it does require you to let down some walls and it does require you to be um, a giver first. And without so, expectation. It, it, talk about that. You have to give without expectation. You know, I get a lot of messages and I try to reply to everyone. I try to do my best. And somebody's like, Hey, can I do this? Well, if I can, of course, you know, of course I'll help you. But if I can't, I mean, Hey, there are some boundaries or some rules. There are some things I'm not allowed to do or whatever. Um, right. But man, if you just give, I've been so fortunate, you know, and I, my podcast has given me, uh, you know, a little bit of access. I meet some of the most wonderful people and mm. I get to see them or somebody will connect me like, Hey, um, I have a, I actually have a cool story. Maybe this is a good time to read this. This is, listen to this. This will blow your mind. This blows my mind. I actually get choked up. I'm, I'm probably going to get choked up on this. Um, and he doesn't know I'm going to do it, but too bad. All right. So listen to this. Okay. So this is, oh man, I don't have my glasses. November 2016. Oh. Now we're in 21. So this is five Great. plus years ago. Oh, yeah. And it says, hi, Stephen. I recently discovered your podcast the link you shared where you turn the tables on yourself. And so I used to, uh, you know, people always ask, well, what about you? You interroll these right. other people. And so right. I did it, or Andy would come on and interview me, which was really right. cool. It was really neat. Um, I've been binging on your podcast since then. And I feel like I've had an awakening. We'll do about four and a half million this year with RA. And I'm now chomping at the bit to get connected to all my future friends. Now this is 2016. Oh, Signed up for the Prosper show, my first show, and I'm wondering, are there any others that you would recommend as a warm-up before March? Thanks in advance, X. I'm not going to say who X is. Now, that person, I remember we hung out with, we connected, and I remember him telling me later on, so you know it's a man, he actually said something to the effect like, I was in awe because it was you and Andy and LaRon and Nate and I don't know who else it was, maybe Chris Green or whatever. And literally, we laugh about it because at the time he was selling more than all of us combined. You know, I mean, he was. And, and we laugh about it because like he's looking at us like we know what we're talking about. And so um, this was my advice to him. OK, and I would give probably the same advice to almost everyone. Dan, 
I guess I guess tell who it was, reach out to Chris Green and buy him breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Spending a few hours with him alone will give you access to all the important people on my podcast. Then be sure to meet me in Vegas and we'll do the same. Get out of your comfort zone. Don't ask for anything. Don't ask for anything. Just give to others and you will get back 10x. Peace and fair holidays for you and your family. He goes, thank you, Stephen. I will do just that. Discovered Chris lives only a few towns from this is 2016. He had no clue who Chris Green was. He was was out on his own selling four and a half million dollars. And he said, thank you for writing me back in your podcast. It has already stirred so many fires in me. God bless Dan. Oh, now Dan and I, and Andy, our best friends, you know, we talk every single day. How do you find somebody in your life? You tell me that that podcast wasn't meant for that right there. Right. If so I put out all those episodes right. to meet Dan Come on. and help him. And he's at four. And, and I get so choked up thinking about, you know, um, you know, it, that's that's why I did it. And I must admit, I didn't I didn't ask for anything. And look what I get from it. <laughs> yeah, you were sowing good seed for many, many years. And uh, you've got a wonderful harvest. Um, Hmm. Two great brothers of mine who are kind of nuts, but um, at least they're your nuts. (laughs) So that's what connecting with others is. And look at what Dan's done. Dan is in every other one of your lives. That's right. right? Because of it. And guess what? He'll sell more than all of us. But he he could care less about that. He'll talk about hanging out with Chris Williams or Todd Ferguson or Rex or right. Gay, or Colleen, right. or, you know, Dan and Andy, or Gary. I mean, all, like, that's Dan, who found this world, um, because right. of that. So, right. that's, that's connecting. A, that's, a, that's connecting. And that's a beautiful story. You know, and there's nothing wrong with reaching out and just saying, you know, hey, I just want to put myself on your radar, you know, I appreciate what you do. And, you know, I'd love to be a cheer, cheerleader for you. You know, there was a lady that I knew in the past and, and uh, she tells the story that she wanted to, she wanted to get close to me. And um, I had no idea that she did, you know, I was not paying attention to that. And so she was like, you know, how, how would I, how would I do that? You know, and, and, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, not a real forward person. And she said, it just came in her heart one day, be her cheerleader. And so interesting because, you know, of how I was raised in the past, you know, I have that negative voice that, you know, that it's, it sounds like my father, (laughs) it's usually in my father's voice. That's, that beats me up, you know, that's constantly, you know, uh, knocking me down. And I didn't know how much I needed a cheerleader. Mm. And so sometimes it's you reaching out to that person, you're bringing the very thing that they need. I mean, Dan brought to you something that you had a hunger for in your own life, in your own heart. And, and to be honest, I think the, the thing that I brought Dan was like, all of a sudden he can, it's acceptable for the light to shine on him. It was so obvious to me, you know, anybody right. else would see it. it's apparent he couldn't see it. And right. now he shines his light on every other person. Right. And, you point. know, it's, it's just such a cool thing. If I had that little bit in my life, I'm like, I won because now all of a sudden he's helping everybody and he went might not have been and so it's it's a very cool it's very cool one more story about that too is um i like dan and i both get up early we always drink coffee early in the morning we're both up we're old men we get up really early and sunrise chasers we're the sunrise chaser and so um alan walker and branson i remember either messaged me or messaged somehow and we got to have coffee with them in the morning and man what a star and to be able to meet somebody like that we're envious and here he was like, so great, uh, grateful to meet us. He, and he was, time. he was seeing stars and he was like, oh, I get to we have saw the upcoming star in him. Wentworth and Steven Peterson. And we would have that in Hershey. Um, I would hope somebody reaches out to me and yeah. Dan and, and wants to have that coffee, take the initiative, especially if you're shy and you're uncomfortable, right. guess what? You know, I'm shy on the inside, but we're all a little bit, right. um, uh, you know, we've all started from somebody, somebody helped me. So guess what? I'll help you. Somebody yeah. helped me. Somebody exactly. helped every single person, every person that's successful. That's exactly right. So. That's exactly right. Here's another softball for you. Stop trying to be right <laughs> all the time. So this is me fighting against myself. Um, you know, I grew up in a negative household, kind of similar to you. And I, I didn't have a father. Didn't know my father. Turns out wasn't my real father anyway, thanks to 23andMe. Found that out. Yeah. But 
uh, you know, you always, so that negativity comes out in me and I have to work hard not to show it. Um, and I think I've gotten better. I'm, I'm married 35 years this year and my wife is, you've met my wife. She's wonderful. And she makes yeah. me such a better person. She's but again, star. connecting with these other uh, gentlemen who are good husbands and good fathers helps me continue that. Yeah. And so um, I just have to stop, you know, like I have to get my point across. I'm always right. Okay. You know, oh, you're, you're, you know, I'm a one upper or whatever. I don't want right. to be that guy. And though, right. when, if you are that person, acknowledge it, know you have it in you like I do. And so pull back and just listen more, just sit back and listen. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a good seller, but holy, look at this guy wow, I can be better or I can be a better husband or I can be a better father or a better, you know, person. And uh, I tell you, the more I stop and listen, the more I learn, you know, at this point in my life, I've got so much to learn. And it's so neat to hear that when others say things. And then, and for me with my podcast, that's when I hear a spark. I hear you say something and I think to myself, Ooh, I make a note usually at these conferences of people I want to talk to, because I heard you say something and it, I'm like, they don't realize what a big deal that is. I see it. You know, right. um, so it gives me a chance to be a noticer and uh, it's really worked yeah. really well. Mm, that's good. Be a noticer. That's powerful. I, that is my gift. It's funny. I can, I, it, in my, my corporate career, I, w- I remember like, they would bring me in because um, I w- I'm an accountant by trade, but they would bring you into a, a, a declining property to improve. Now, mm, right. I mean, to cut things, you know, I mean, yeah, like my, yeah. you know, the town where I live, I laid off 85% of the staff. It's awful. Uh-oh. I feel terrible. But I, um, and I remember Andy and I run into McDonald's one day and somebody from the kitchen calls out my name and it's somebody who I laid off and it, ooh, it still hurts me a little bit um, oh. to see that. But I was really good at it. And then I would go in there and I'd look and they're like, they couldn't close their books at this property they bought two years earlier, literally couldn't close their books. And I could see what was wrong. Like I, I just see it, you know, for me, right. it's just like obvious. Right. And that's a gift I have. It's really right. transferred well to Amazon. So I can walk into a room. I can see the value. I see mm. the value in people. I see the value yeah. um, in items. And so I think yeah. that's part of the reason I've had success, but it's also part of the reason my podcast, I had so many interesting people. They didn't see the value in themselves, but I right. saw, it. you know, being a noticer, right. I noticed those things. So I, I think it's important. It is. Uh, apply that to how you operate your warehouse now. I mean, uh, you you have a large warehouse, Mm -hmm. you have um, eight figure client. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Growing. Jesus, they grow. They every day. (laughs) Oh my God. They kill me. Jesus. That's right. Um, But, but apply that to your, cause you're running a pretty big staff now. Yeah. We have 11 people. We have 11 people, including myself, um, full-time. And, um, you know, it's funny, uh, not Andy, but Nathan, okay? And so Nathan, who we all get to work with, Nathan is a true CEO. He's younger than my – I have kids older than Nathan, but I would follow Nathan off a cliff because Nathan is a true CEO. Um, I I tell them because I sit on leadership calls with them and stuff. And, and, and it's funny. I'm, I said, I'm back in corporate America, I feel like, but I'm back with a really good leader, a very reasonable leader, one who sits there and says, you know, like values people and stuff. And it's neat to see. Um, And so I'm very fortunate to work with those guys and I I treasure them um, um, 100%. But I, I follow, like I watch now Todd Ferguson's a good example, right? We've sent a whole bunch of our clients to Todd because I trust Todd. I know he knows what he's doing and he's, uh, he, he's willing to do more. Like he gets Mm. it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's like a rare thing to see, but Mm -hmm. I watch and I listen. And so I'll take ideas from Todd. Mm -hmm. I listen to Gary or when I see Mm -hmm. somebody show their warehouse, I always Mm -hmm. follow an idea. I'm always like, Oh, that's something, an improvement. Perry Coughlin's a good one. I think Perry's got, he's, I I always tell him he's a little bit of a wacko when it comes to this stuff because he gets so retentive about it. (laughs) Yeah. But you can't argue with his results. He knows what he's yeah, talking about. So like, do I have stuff labeled on shelves because of Perry? Do I have outlines for things? Yes. And so I learned from those and uh, Dan's warehouse. I've been to Dan's warehouse and you go in there and you get to see um, how people do it, how they do it. And you are like, huh, um, if you're coming to my warehouse, 
one of the 50 that are coming, um, which right. I'm excited. One of the topics I'm going to talk about is using the space you have, because I have limitations in my warehouse, but I'm going to make the most of them. Dan will be there and Adam will be there. So those yes. who don't know that, um, right. but we'll talk about their warehouse and how they make the most of where they are. And I think no matter where you are, when I was working in my basement, I made the most of that. Okay. Right. Your operation, that, that building behind your house is incredible. Right. Right. You make the most of it, you know, and exactly. so wherever you are, if you're in your living room, you're wherever, make the most of it. Yeah. And so, yeah, um, that, I've done that. I've been very fortunate. You know, and let, let, let's let's go back to uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the three, you another know, softball water, by the way, do, water. dovetail into something else here. Um, you talked about listening more than you talk and the. I guess the two sides of the coin is as you're listening more than you're talking, you do get to notice, you get to make mental mm -hmm. notes about what's important to that person. And then you get to pick up on that as you move your relationship forward. I think we're in an age where relationship building is not, um, is not necessarily natural for the younger people. Stephen, you and I both come from, uh, you know, the older generation where relationship. You just called me old. Right. <laughs> well, I'm older than you, so it's okay if I do that. Um, and both of us came by this, honestly, yeah. right? But we come from the generation where um, relationships are a little more natural. It's more natural to us because we didn't have all the technology getting in the way. We saw how the old folks sat in the living room and talked, how the neighbors would come to visit and have conversations. You know, we saw those kinds of things modeled for us. And then in the business world, um, people don't understand that business is always reciprocal, isn't it? It's always a give and take, a ebb and flow, isn't it? Yeah, it, 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 as long as you go into it with the right attitude, it doesn't always have to be a quid pro quo. You know, it shouldn't be. I mean, you know, obviously you're, you you want to buy something, you want to pay, for, you're, you're going to pay the least amount, that kind of thing. But if you can make it win-win, well, relationships are the same way. If I'm always just calling you for advice and not offering you anything, yeah, I say this to Dan because Dan helps me enormously too, you know, like Andy. Yeah. And I'm always like, Dan, this gives me a chance to get back to you. He's like, you don't have to give me anything. I know. I'm like, I know that, but let me give you this, please. Let me do this for you because it allows me to make sure that I keep pouring back into that relationship too, because I think, you know, and I, I'm guilty of that. I, I have a million questions, you know, I'll pepper you with questions when, especially when I'm interviewing, but if I go into a, see your warehouse, I'll be like, what about this? What about this? What about right. this? Right. But I hope that you'll be like, um, I have a challenge too. Here's a good example. So this past weekend or during the week, I guess uh, today's what Thursday. So Monday I had lunch with uh, a special group of people, other Amazon sellers, friends. Uh, we go to the Philly gift show. Been going for, I think this is our fourth or fifth year. We have lunch every year, four, four of us. Um, three of them are seven figure sellers. Um, and I, one of them brought up a, a, a new shipping program and I'm like, Ooh, I could use that. And then all of a sudden uh, they gave me an incredible idea. Then somebody else was like in challenge with something else. I'm like, you know, FedEx one rate might be the answer for you. And I went through all the litany about that. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else was having a challenge with ship station or something like that. I could offer value there. So it was like four sellers contributing to each other. And yeah, I might sell more than them, but that doesn't mean I know more than them. Right. And then, so I was able to help them. They were able to help me. Right. And by getting out of your comfort zone, you know, I mean, you're pretty comfortable on stage. You weren't always correct. Right. Exactly. And you probably still get nervous going up there and you probably fight the imposter syndrome, all the stuff that everybody else does. We're just willing to say it out loud mm -hmm. that um, I've seen like Dan go up and he's like so nervous. And then he gets up there and he wows everybody. Because, oh, yeah. When you at know, the Branson conference, people still talk about or Adam Casey. I mean, talk about somebody Adam. who's incredible. Adam. Oh, my gosh. And, and yet, a pin drop in spring. but they would be so panicky beforehand. So everybody's in that boat is my point. Everybody feels that yeah. way. We might look more comfortable, but yeah. that's because we acknowledge that we're uncomfortable. Right. Right. So if you're, if you're a little shy, you know, come and talk with me. Uh, yeah. I hope at Andy's uh, party on that Monday, if you're going to be in uh, Hershey, right. Right. Um, that barbecue, 
uh, I'll be there. And then Tuesday, I'll be there. And then Wednesday, I'll be there. And so please, if you, especially if you don't know anyone and you want to meet somebody, I'll introduce you to anybody. We were at a conference and Sam Cohen's uh, in New Jersey. And I was speaking at the conference and Chris Green and I were there and there was a whole bunch of people. And these two guys come up to me and they're like, hey, you know, uh, Chris Green, is that Chris Green over there? I'm like, yeah you don't know him. And he's like, Oh no, I, you know, whatever. I'm like, Hey, uh, I said, look, I'm going to bring him over here. You buy him a beer. I said, okay. The guy's like, yeah, sure. I bring him. Hey, Chris, this guy wants to buy you a beer. He wants to talk about that. Oh, awesome. So Chris stood there. They were talking for, I don't know, an hour and a half. And I went back over. Are you guys okay? You're still talking. And what a relationship. They're so afraid to say something. Chris would love to help you. Well, right. guess what? I think most of us would be in the same boat because we've been right. helped. So right. don't be afraid to jump out and ask for help and talk to people. Cause I'll talk to you. Might, right. I might talk your ear off, but I'll talk to you. <laughs> right. Well, you know, uh, a big feature to what we're rolling out in the uh, Gary, Gary is the one that put this together for the tribe six coaching round is the power move masterminds where people can um, take that topic and then begin to, to put pieces and parts. Everyone gets to bring a piece or a part, you know, because what works for me in my space at my time and the product that I'm dealing with may not work for someone else. And so sometimes it, it helps to have kind of, you know, several minds mastering that situation together. And uh, you get to be in on a lot of those conversations. Let me throw another softball at you if you don't mind. Now, don't blush when I say this one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Run when you see them naked. Mm. That's how when we you, say it down here in the Ozarks, naked. Naked. I, this, this was a story. We were, I don't remember. I try to remember whether we were in Vegas or Kentucky. It might have been Kentucky or it might have been uh, Gaylord Hotel in Nashville. I don't know. We went to a lot of conferences. Andy and I would travel all around. and We would go to these conferences. And I remember going to one, and we saw some, some guys we hadn't seen in a while. And we were like having lunch or whatever. And they were like, hey, we're going to the strip club. And like, this was all exciting. And I'm like, I look at Andy. And I'm like, what did they, you know, I'm like, okay, we'll see you guys. We both were like, we're out of here. And the problem is in their world, that was exciting to them. They got out of there. They were out there. They were going to have fun. I'm like, I value my wife so much. I'm so lucky to be married. And I mean, like. So Andy and I went and did whatever that, you know, I'm very cordial to those people still, yeah. but I'm not hanging with them. We're not yeah. the same people. And you know what? I'm not judging them. I just don't right. want to be part of it. So right. nothing personal. You do what you want to do. I'm not judging right. again. I just, that's just not my cup of tea. So when you see somebody and when you see what they really are, and I, and I, and I, I think I said this on Andy's birthday, it is 50th birthday. Um, when you travel that much and we might enjoy an adult beverage or two, and you see people the way they are and you sleep in the same room for night after night, you know, you get to see people for what they really are. And that's what I look for. Those are the people that I embrace the other ones. I'll be cordial. I'll be polite, but I'm not hanging with you and I'm not going to have you watch my kids or, you know, that kind of thing. So, so just know who you're with and be really careful, you know, be really careful, be friendly, be polite, but, that's I don't right. want to hang with you. Nothing Gary personal. Has, Gary has a statement that he makes and uh, he says, I'm content to dwell with my own people. And I think mm. it's good for us to be content to dwell with our own people because sometimes we will, we will emulate or we will hold somebody up and then we find out, you know, that maybe their ethics or their morals or et cetera are not what we want to embrace in our lives. And I'm not perfect. And again, I'm not saying I've done right every single time. I've done all my share of wrong things. But again, I'm putting a string of good decisions together. So why would I participate in anything like exactly. that and take a step back? No, simple. No, of course not. I'm not doing that. Exactly. You know, again, I want to continue my good decisions, not, exactly. not, not revert. You know, so Let's talk that's about my simple string. advice. Let's talk about a string of good decisions. There was a point when you came into from eBay into Amazon, you start building your Amazon. You were also selling on eBay. So you're kind of running these. Kind They'll of do. Currently. And then there was a place where Amazon really kind of uh, took over. It was like, here, we're, we're more over here than we are here. We're not balanced anymore. We're more over here. And then there was a, a, a place where you really kind of took on uh, the love and care of hundreds of sellers across the United States with the e-commerce momentum podcast. 
that takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of preparation. I know you, you're very detail oriented. You're very thoughtful. You're a thinky guy. You're not just shooting off the cuff. Um, and uh, I, can, I can seriously testify to that, folks. He really is a thinky guy. He's thoughtful about what he's saying or what, he, what value he's going to bring. Um, but, but you're doing that. It's a lot of time. So you, you really can't uh, be 100% focused on business building like you really wanted to. And now you've kind of had to say, you know, I really want to focus. And now you have this good decision, this good decision, this good decision, and momentum is taking over in your business. And so let's talk numbers now. Do you mind? I, I don't mind. I mean, I don't mind. Numbers. We'll sell we'll sell seven figures on eBay still. And I, I we have more than one eBay account. We actually run one for a friend who's 79 years old, wonderful man, one of my mentors who sells vinyl records. Like he oh. knows, he knows all these crazy groups. I have no clue. And so his expensive records I sell on eBay for him. Um, and uh, because he's not, he's like, I'm not learning a computer or whatever, but oh. it's just a great deal. And we've been friends forever and he's taught me so much. So we do sell in that. We used to sell on Poshmark. We stopped because um, it's worse than eBay. You know, mm. if you put up something that's valued at a hundred dollars and you put it up at 60 bucks, brand new with tags, you're getting offered $12. Uh, and then it's mm -hmm. twelve fifty, and it's I'm like I'm not answering questions. Like I'm I'm not interested. Right, so right, you stop. So anybody who's really hitting it on Poshmark, good for you. Not for me. Um, I'm just right. not going to do that. Right. Um, and and to be honest with you, eBay is very challenging anymore because they're going through some big transitions, yeah. their database, and it makes it really challenging, but there's still an audience there. And if you sell shoes and clothing like we do, it's a great place to get rid of stuff. Um, and I'm very, very fortunate. Um, and this would be something that I'm talking about in my warehouse meetup, but also in your little millionaire thing is about having a plan for returns and things like that. And that we yeah. have a process, that process I don't sweat any of those details anymore. I don't have to look at it. I don't have to get involved in it. Um, and that we have a really strong process we built there nice. using eBay. Um, but then on Amazon, so our daily, I always look at things in daily sales. I'm all about, you know, hey, sitting milestones. So when I see that person celebrating, they hit $1,000 a day in sales, that's $365,000 a year. That's your yeah. pace. Yeah. If you can hold that pace, that's a pretty big business. When you look at downtown Branson, most of those stores down there don't do three hundred and sixty five thousand dollars now you have right. that there are some that do i'm sure there's some that that uh five and dime which if you ever go to brands and go to five and dime scan everything there's a lot of good value there um but those other stores they don't do three hundred and sixty five thousand yeah. yeah. um they don't and they're still they're paying rent and this and that mm -hmm. so if you can operate a three hundred sixty five thousand dollar business out of your basement or out of a bedroom or out of your living room you have a big advantage, That's right. huge advantage. So don't right. downplay that. And so for me, it's a milestone thing. And then, yeah. you know, you hit that two, three, 5,000. So for us, a low day, if we hit eight, you know, that's great when we, we, we pretty much that's a floor for us anymore, but we try to hit 11. So if I hit 11 a day, we hit that yesterday, that puts me at the 4 million, 15,000 pace. I know that because I checked that. And so I'm forever talking to my boys. We meet every single morning in my morning huddle. I do gotcha. morning huddles. And again, nice. if you come to my warehouse, I'll talk about that. Um, or if you go to this millionaire thing, I will talk about it there too. But I have three groups of people. I have a warehouse services team. Right. And we do tech support, shipping, and we have more than just one client. We have several. So I have to do that morning huddle. We ship. I think we had Jen Simmers came to my warehouse two days ago. She's like, is this your... Uh, Every day, there were six pallets of UPS going out and 12 pallets of FedEx going out every day, every <laughs> single day. And, you know, these are some are FBA, some are not. And so that takes a lot to manage. And sure. we'll receive 10 containers in August. We know it. We already know what they are. But to coordinate that and store it and receive it and mark right. the inventory. And we have to do inventory for our companies. Right. You know, that's a morning huddle. We do that every yeah. morning. Well, my prep team too, because we do things, we have, a, I think a decent system. Again, I copied off a of Dan or I copy off a of Perry or I copy off a of Todd, um, our system. Um, I do, what are we going to do? There should be an order. There should be some yeah. logic to it. Yeah. So we do that discussion yeah. and then our buyers, you know, we have a, we actually, 
I'll drop my little hint about a spoken hub model I use that I have. And um, we track, we know exactly what our budget is. We know exactly how much they spent. Nice. They update the board. I mean, it's, nice. it's so exciting when they message me, Hey, we did this. Nice. And that is done every day. And we nice. do that, that huddle every day. And so um, I forget what you asked about because I get so excited about this stuff, but it, it's just that, just that, that communication, right. Having that communication right. is probably the best thing I do. And sometimes it gets corny, um, but I think it's, I think it's super fun uh, and they get excited. So let's just say that um, by the end of the year, you're hanging around, you know, 4 million. I don't know that we'll hit 4 million. Andy throws that out there. He scares well, me to death. He's always, warehouse. our pace will be there. Our pace is over. Well, we'll, I mean, we're on the 4 million pace. I don't know that we'll finish at that total, but we're on a pace for that for sure. Nice. We're lucky with that. Multiple seven figure seller. You're multiple in a lot of ways, uh, Stephen. You're you're a many faceted, multi talented guy. One of the things I really, really admire and appreciate about you is that you're a thoughtful guy, um, and you are a noticer. I had the great uh, pleasure of uh, me and my sister and Andy and his wife, Dan and his wife, you and your wife, Gary and his wife, Paul got to share a house down in Florida for a week together. And you just blew me away with your noticing. Um, Very kind. You're a, you're a watchful, thoughtful thinker. And uh, that means your words have weight when people listen to you. They're actually getting some value. And I appreciate that so much about you. It's very kind. But again, those are back to this point of making the right uh, making a string of right decisions. And again, we, earlier we talked about it, begin today. If you messed up yesterday, start today. And then please go to bed with a good thought in your mind tomorrow, knowing that you're going to do the next right thing and the next right thing and the next right thing. And then all of a sudden, and when that wrong thing comes up in front of your face, think about my strip club comment. That's the God's oh. honest truth that that happened. And it's like Damn. no chance. Yeah. And, but that point, my, and I guess I do, I don't look down upon them. I just look at them in a different way. And I'm like, that's not my crowd. Okay. So right. when you hang around with the wrong crowd and I have, uh, you don't want to stop. So make that right decision. So when I'm around people like you and Gary um, and his wife, who I, that was the first time I really got to spend time with, I'm amazing. You know, I mean, yeah. now you know why Gary uh, is the way he is, right? Yeah. You know, he, he is Absolutely. held up really hard, you know, by, yeah. and that's just awesome to see. And, um, you know, it's just, I'm so lucky. I'm just so fortunate. Um, but those discussions to have those discussions at that level, you know, all of us are, you know, decent sized sellers to be able to have that discussion that's earned. Right. Why right. that's not, did I ask you for anything? No, no not, not one thing, all. not at all. Not all. Don't want anything, but hopefully, uh, I got a ton from it, you know, and so right. by, by giving you get, you know, and so yes. I think that's hopefully full. So I know this is a little wishy-washy. I'm not offering you no, no, no. the secrets of Amazon. I'm not going to give you the big advice and how to find in Walmart Lego clearance right now. I don't have right. any of that stuff. Join the group for that stuff. This is the group right. to do that. Not right, me. right, right. Stephen, you've been in Amazon Seller Tribe now for a while and um, you, you stroll in there and stroll around and notice watch and listen and notice and um what's your take on amazon seller tribe at this point you know when when you had a you had a struggle not that long ago somebody made some kind of you know uh just just something it was it was an uncomfortable thing and it was you know probably not meant the way it came but it just you still have to think about your words can hurt people and you really have to be mindful of that and we're all human beings and i sit back and i say to myself you know i see every group i get free access to almost everything out there because of my podcast and i watch and i see behind the scenes and i've sat in some of your guys meetings i see the way you talk about people it's no different than what you're doing right here yeah. There's no curtain. There's no person behind the curtain right. pulling a string like the Wizard of Oz nonsense. Right. This is the real thing, you know. And so to have that genuineness, and I'm sure most people are really uncomfortable, like, all right, when they're going to get me, they're going to get me at some point. <laughs> right. No, no. Um, 
they're telling them the truth. This is hard work. This isn't easy. You're going to fail. You're going to, you're going to make mistakes. Cause guess what? You're going to see, if you come to a warehouse, you're going to see a warehouse full of mistakes. Right. Right. But again, I'm making the right decisions, a whole bunch of them. And I'm having a little bit of success. Wow. I think the same thing happens here. I think the challenge in your group is this, they see all those million dollar sellers and they're comparing themselves to that. Or they say, Dan and Michelle selling $10 million. Now, when you get to know Dan better, you'll, he'll, he'll introduce you to Adam. And right. one of the reasons Dan sells $10 million is because of Adam. And then you get to meet Brett. And then you get right. to meet the rest of the people that he developed. Don't get me wrong. But you realize that Dan's 20-year overnight success was 20 right. years it's in the built. making. Right. You come in in six months and you think you know it all. Yep. Me. Like, I think I know it all. That's why I have to step back and listen more and sit sure. back and say, you know what? I know this much. But when Ellie or Jen this weekend mentioned the shipping thing that I never heard of, somebody who's really connected, never heard of, and it can enhance my business because I was paying attention. Um, that's what Seller Tribe is to me. It's it's amazing to me, the buildup. I don't see negativity. I don't see people judging each other. Everybody's made the same mistakes. Um, and the people that you have, uh, the coaches that you have are so impressive to me. I mean, the Alan Walkers of the world, um, the uh, Todd Ferguson's of the world, uh, Trevor. I mean, when I sit there and look at all these people and how good they are, how much they know, and they're half my age, you know, it's pretty impressive. Um, and then what you and Colleen and Gary and Andy and Nate bring, you know, again, Nate, I, I just can't say enough about him, you know, just right. the most organized, unspoken, you don't hear from him, but right. man, he making it all happen. And then Andy with the passion and the humanity, he'll take anybody's call, right. he'll do anything for anyone. He's opening up his house, you right. know, and, um, and he's living his life in front of you. You right. see it the way it is. I've seven years, yep. I've been with them forever. And with his shirt off is. most of the time recently. <laughs> hot in the warehouse but back to it it's just that your group is honestly the most honest group i've ever seen i you know i've been to some of the other groups and the pitching just never stops right. always making an offer oh we got another deal for you come on right. join right. another thing join another right. no don't don't spend another dime no right. you're in the group take advantage of it do right. the work put your head down right. and do the work and that's what you guys preach and demonstrate every single day right. and 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 i think i said this to you too one thing is that i love the fact that you're still a seller you know, mm, yes. you guys get paid. I mean, this, you don't do this for free. You have a paid group, right, but you're still right. a seller because right. I think, uh, I think Gary said at one time, your risk of getting away from that makes you not real. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and then absolutely. all of a sudden you're just standing on the side coaching without, you know, right. ever trying to get in there and hit the ball. That's so right. it's very you know, real. My, my uh, son uh, played college basketball, the very, very best coach he ever had um, in basketball was one of Norm Stewart's uh, stars at, at uh, uh, University, University of Missouri. And he played D1 basketball and was a star at D1 basketball, signed for NBA before he got injured um, and then ended up in coaching. So he was the real deal. He was a real deal player. Well, that's how you learn, like and real. And that, that made him a brilliant coach, which is why my son did as well as he did to go on to, well, to play. And, and so blush a, little, but blush a little bit when I say this, that's why there was a, a whole uh, stage of the, for the conference I didn't attend in. Yes, thank you. Um, that's why there was a whole stage of people having success because yeah. they're getting coached in a real genuine way. I see those posts all the time. I was struggling. Yeah. I couldn't find my way. And I found this group through whatever reason and God forbid right. uh, they didn't, but if they found it through me, that's awesome. Right. Whatever way they found there. And all of a sudden they found a home and now all of a sudden they're achieving success. They had yeah. the success. You just helped them see it yeah. and you help them see it yeah. in a real way. And that's probably there's there. I don't know of another group that does that. Honest to God, I really mm -hmm. don't. And I see a lot of them and there's some great people coaching and stuff like that. But I'm just telling you, you just don't see a home like this, a safe home where a Jeff Howard, who is a star, just doesn't know it sometimes. Yeah. And you can see him right. realize. I, I just right. love to see like it. it love it, to see really those people succeed. It really, cool. it really is a, a joy. It's just it really a joy is. to see that. Stephen, your success is um, multifaceted and um, you are not a man that seeks honor. You're not a man that seeks mm -hmm. awards. You don't have them, you know, lined up around you and you don't relish that. Um, but there is one small thing we can do for you if you will let us. 
-hmm. and that is to honor you tonight um, and welcome you officially because i've never gotten to do this officially yeah because i didn't make it to branson i know go ahead Kate. now you're going to start on me too <laughs> you didn't, didn't make it to branson but officially uh. i'd like to welcome you to the coveted gold lanyard sellers that's very awesome and i'd like you to reach through that camera if you would if just reach uh, reach, reach, reach through there got it. thank you thank you very kind now, now some people actually think that works and uh, and I keep thinking mm. it's going to work someday. It's going to land on somebody's desk. I almost I almost had the good trick down the other night, but I missed a cue. Coveted gold lanyard, multiple seven figure seller. We respect you. We appreciate you. You've been a voice uh, of reason to many. You've been a sound voice to many. <clears throat> I know that you must have a heart of gold, because. Mm. I know your two dearest friends and they have hearts of gold. And they do. when you run together like that, when you surround yourself with great people, uh, greatness just starts happening. And we just see that in you. We see that in uh, some of our tribe members coming up. They're just so close to the coveted gold lanyard seller status. Some of them are hitting their half million dollar status now. And it's- Celebrate it's, that. Man, they should yes, celebrate that. They Don't miss that. Celebrate that because- Remember the Chris Wilkie story. 20 yes. grand is all he needed to make a year to yes. have the yes. And that was job. that was a success. It's real. And, you don't have to be a gold lanyard seller to be celebrated in Amazon Seller Tribe, but our goal here is to help create the most seven-figure sellers in the industry because we feel like that when you get to that selling level, then you have something that absolutely can change the trajectory of your life 100%. and your family's lives. 100%. Stephen, you've proven that over and over again with your business. Mm, Thank you for good. being here. What wor last word of wisdom would you give to that brand new seller that might be listening? They may, maybe they're just now getting their account open. Maybe they're, they've sold for just one or two months and somehow they've landed in Amazon seller tribe. What would you say to them right now? Well, I have two things. So first I'm, I'll, I'll do that. And then I want to say something to close. Um, what I would say to them is find another similar group, somebody who you find interest with similar interest. You watch, I watch how dads are with their kids. I watch that because guess what? Or I watch the way men talk to their wives. Yep. And then I'm like, Hmm, I can see something there. And uh, you know, then I'm attracted or I'm not attracted. Right. And so find somebody who's struggling too, because guess what? Two voices together are better than, you know, right. one. And so, you know, reach out and get out of your comfort zone. You know, if you're coming to Hershey, make sure you get a chance that we get a chance to talk. I'm sure I'm going to be talking to a million different people, but I promise you, I'll give you the time. But so will Dan, so will Andy, so will Gay, so will Gary, so will Colleen, so yep. will... Um, all the other so people that are going to be there. Right? Exactly. And you just have to swallow your pride. You don't know it all. You've been with us for three months. You don't know it all. Guess what? When I was there three months, I had no clue. So just know that you do, we're not judging you on how little you know. No. The enthusiasm for me is probably the best part. When I see the enthusiasm, I'm like, oh man, that is, you know, I saw that in Alan Walker. I could just see, and oh, I, yeah. I could see his mind and I could see he's going to be a superstar. Sure enough, yeah. boom. <laughs> he's a superstar. When, when you met him in Branson, he, as far as I know, hadn't, gotten to the half million dollar level now it's over two million but i'm sure it was really hard for him to reach out to me to it say was. hey i want to come and have you know would you mind having a call of course we'd love but to talk to determined. you but that's what i would say to your new seller that's all it takes you know so get out of your comfort zone and just come and, and learn and listen and um do the work, you know, it's hard. And I remember, like I said, I, before work and I had a big job, I mean, I was an executive and I would, I would go and buy because Walmart was open back then. And I would go and buy before work. And then I'd go out at lunchtime. I'd take my lunch when I wanted, boom, I'd go and buy. And then after work, I would do my uh, going to people's houses and buying stuff and that kind of thing. And then I would ship, you know, every single day, I still ship seven days a week, every single day, Saturday and Sunday after church, we go there. If, if we're not planning, if we don't have plans, um, still do it. And we've been selling a long time. So uh, new sellers, that's what you want to do. Now I have ask, 
Go ahead. So yeah, anything I, you want. I, now I have I have a bunch of interviews lined up for my podcast. And again, I'm looking for the story. I don't care how much you sell. I yeah. care that, you know, back to my Chris Wilkie story, I care that you found a way to adapt this to design your life. Because I'm right. all about life design right. right now. I want better health. I want a better relationship. I want to be a right. better dad, that kind of thing. So if you're, you know comfortable. I'd, I have a safe podcast. I don't ask really hard questions, but I love that stuff. So I'd love to, yeah. to take on some new interviews. And so I've already told Gay and Gary, I'm probably going to interview every single person in this group. Yes. Because I think your story, you have a different story and a different reason yeah. you're here. And I love that stuff. So if you're interested in any way, reach out to me, send me a, send yeah. me a message on Facebook. Um, I'd love yes. to talk to you. Um, it's no pictures. I don't do it with video like this. I just do it with voice. And right. I just love the story and I won't embarrass right. you and I won't ask you hard questions. Um, but I love that. So I'd love to have some fresh, uh, well, some Mom, fresh interviews. So if somebody's nice interested, to him. he's sincere and he's, I mean it. he's, he's a safe guy to be with for sure. Yeah. Uh, Steven, you brought hundred percent as usual, 110% as usual. Well, if you're coming to my warehouse, I promise you, because I, I'm going to let this out there now, both Dan and Adam are coming down with me. I'm bringing them back from Andy's house to my warehouse. So nice. we're going to have a really big thing. And then if you do, I think, you know, I'm going to put you on, I'll, I'll advertise your little group here. You've got your coaching ends this Saturday, right? Yeah. To sign up. Yeah. Coaching and closes. I'm yeah. going to do something with uh, Adam coaching or something. Sign up closes. Yeah. yeah. There's something I'm going to do in your group that I'll go deeper mm -hmm. on, on our business and that. So if you do decide to join, I don't think it's, I've not seen, it's funny. That's the other thing about your group is you're, there are people that have been all six. Yes. They, they couldn't yes. because they get value every single time, every, every single, single time. time. And yeah. so if you're on the fence, do it. Don't make a mistake. Don't miss yeah. it. Um, I'm not going to benefit other than I get a chance to meet you. So yeah. I win. That's my win, you know? Yeah. And so um, I would, I would love to meet you and I'd love to go deeper. Um, I look forward to meeting a whole bunch of people um, and, and seeing a whole bunch of the same people. I just, it's such a wonderful thing. Um, yeah. And I, I won't miss another one because I'll never hear the end of it. Uh, <laughs> so I won't miss another one. Good. But, so, good, good job, Dan. You. Stephen, thank, thank you for spending this time thank you with so much. me tonight. I appreciate, really appreciate it. it. And uh, look forward to about five weeks from now, giving you a good hug. And uh, we'll hang out together there. And again, reach out to me if I can help you in any way. If anybody wants to talk to anybody who I've ever interviewed, I'll connect you. So yeah. anytime. Beautiful. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Appreciate you. You too. Take Guys, care. thank you for being here. Appreciate you being on Amazon Seller Tribe webinar tonight. Shout out to Stephen Peterson. Tell him how much you appreciate him. Oh, very kind.